everyone appreciates his sessions but he noticed that there were never any follow up sessions so it got him wondering do people want to be efficient at work or is being inefficient beneficial in some scenarios so to discuss this we have our panelists who shall be introducing themselves let's invite them in alphabetical order over to you anand hi um i'm anand ghosh i do many things but specific to the context of today's panel discussion i guess my professional history is of interest i spent the 90s as an internet startup entrepreneur before the dot com boom and i managed to cash out before the dot com crash my 2000s i spent as a corporate cog various roles from chief technology officer of a multinational to director of a fortune 500 corporation at the end of the 2000s i decided to break out on my own and the last decade i've spent as a freelancer as an independent consultant both in corporate strategy and at the other extreme in the creative fields of industrial product design and 3d visualization that's me thank you anindo looking forward to your insights from the vast pools of knowledge next we have doc dr nitin paranspe doc your video is off ha ah. yeah hi um as many of you already know and i am looking at the list we have many very senior cios and industry figures in the session so thank you for joining uh i have been doing this for 30 years initial 15 years i was in it but then i realized that uh, the most commonly used product office is not getting as much attention as it should and that's how i focus on office related platform and the efficiency which can be extracted from it so that's me thank you doc we also have sharad san go for it as yes yeah Hi. thank you good afternoon everybody uh i'm sharat i have uh, about 15 years of experience in the manufacturing sector and uh, it services business uh i have worked at multiple layers and uh, was also responsible uh, for driving adoption and definitely we have seen a lot of uh, uh, you know benefits or positive uh, outcomes from you know driving adoption and you know uh, in a positive way it has impacted the employee experience uh, uh, you know and the uh user experience so yeah that's that's about me thank you sharat san now when we come to the word inefficiency it is a word that encompasses a vast number of topics so i would like to invite doc to shed some light on what inefficiency means in the context of this event doc yeah sure so i'm going to show you a very quick demo the purpose of this is not the demo and the feature which i am illustrating this is to tell you when we are talking about inefficiency as the word in the context of this event what does it mean i am taking excel as an example and a very simple day to day requirement while using excel so excel is all about data and formulas so when i put a formula obviously we need to copy that formula downwards Uh, there are multiple ways of doing it some people will drag some people will double click some people will copy paste the question is if there are multiple ways of doing something which is the best way that is number 1 and if someone knows there is a best way are they actually propagating that thought and making sure that everyone in the organization or around me or in my domain of influence are they using the best way so problem is even if there are multiple ways of doing it everyone may not know all the ways in my experience 80% of population probably knows only dragging so they have no choice they keep dragging they are using hands brains are idle that is obviously inefficient now if i show double click if you don't know double click you will be very impressed so you go to the corner and then obviously that saved a lot of time and you may think this is efficient but it is not whatever time you saved by not dragging you may spend in jail because it stops at the first blank cell so assuming this was some tax you were submitting you have paid tax for 44 
transactions when you actually had 5000. That's a compliance issue. Now those who have used double click obviously know that and then you have to bridge the gap and double click multiple times, which is even worse than just dragging. So the correct way of doing this is probably commonly not known, but the root cause is we are not aware of what is the last row. So find the last row. Control end is a shortcut, may not always work, but somehow find the last row first. Once you find it, select it upwards. Now we are sure it is the correct range which is selected and then freeze that range, not by putting a named range, but by putting a table inside the table. It checks whether there is a header and then what was our problem? Empty cells, so I'm going to put some empty cells which are visible on the screen right now and I'll put some similar formula and what happens? It automatically copies. Now onwards, you never have to drag or double click or copy paste or struggle in any way. The other benefit of this is sooner or later you're going to get some data, more data I mean, so I'm just going to copy paste some data next month, next day, it'll auto copy. Now this is something which is dramatically better than the most common methods people use. But now with this efficiency in one simple context in a common product called Excel, that is the kind of stuff happens every day on every desktop everywhere in the world. So in this context, we are talking about efficiency being good, not so good, favorable, not favorable, and in which context. So back to users. And I think uh, just before I leave, I think all the panelists can keep the videos on so that people can stabilize their pin videos in their own screen. Yeah. Thank you, Doc. I think we have got a much more clear picture of what inefficiency is in the context of this event today. So with that in mind, let us go back to the question which had which I had mentioned the other day, the earlier, which is do people want to be efficient at work or is being inefficient beneficial in some scenarios? I would like to invite the panelists to. Uh, let's invite Anindu. I think more than the panelists, this question is probably of interest to the audience even more. So why don't we ask the audience for their views? Absolutely. Anyone has any? Please feel free. <coughs> I think we can get it started, Anindo, from. I just want to you. ask a quick question. Oh, is yes. this, uh, this webinar for mul are multiple companies uh, attending this, or is it just our company? Multiple companies. It's okay. an open event. Okay. And I would the, the, the point you just demonstrated, why doesn't Microsoft make this knowledge more visible? <laughs> That's a good question. The problem, I am not from Microsoft. I think none of us are from Microsoft per se, but from what I see, this is this is just one feature. Like this, there are 12,000 plus features in Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Outlook alone. And if 1 billion people use Office, how much amount of marketing money would be required to teach every feature to every user? So I think it's practically impossible. It's just left to individual uh, curiosity and uh, willingness and ability to explore and figure out what is their best way. Basically, it's trial and error. They can put it in their documentation. It's uh, there, uh, but I, nobody reads it. <laughs> uh, well, I, I've studied a lot of Microsoft documentation in the last couple of months, specifically sure. on the Azure stuff, and I actually uh -huh. found the online material specifically for Azure is very good. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. The, to add to that, what I'm Office is not comparatively a new product. It has been there for 30 years, and most people got introduced to Office in early days of their career, maybe school, college, first job, and everyone has learned by trial and error. And the work is getting done. So most people think because my work is getting done, why should I check if there is a better way? Because nobody is objecting to the way I'm working. So it just gets inherently inefficient. There's no attempt being made, that's all. Yeah, within, within Excel specifically, I find yep. there are a few 
what I would call duff, duff cells or dead cells, where you're preparing some data and you, you set up the format to be a certain way. And then there's a few cells that it presents the, the format differently. And I have actually raised this with Microsoft and they give me a rubbish answer. <laughs> and, and this is like when I install a brand new office scenario right. and I still find those dead cells. And you have to think, why doesn't Microsoft clean up the Excel, the template that they provide in the product? Sure. Maybe at the end of the session, you can send me a sample file and I will see if I can be of any help. OK, thank you. Sure. Thank you, Dave. OK, so do you yeah. want to put that poll up? Do you want to get an audience poll of before we jump in as panelists? Yeah, yes. I think we can yeah, do it in really parallel. Cool. By you. OK, so all that. Yeah. Yeah, because it takes uh, 40 people to respond to the poll as well. Sure. So, Shesha, so, yes, so, explain the poll. Yeah, so we're doing a small, uh, just a small survey which we've put in the chat where we're just asking a couple of simple questions that um, if there is a possibility of intentionally trying to be inefficient, and if yes, in what kind of scenarios? If you could briefly give your feedback in that poll, it would be great so that we can take the responses from there and utilize it also in this event. And while you're submitting that, Aninda, would you like to add something to the question of do people want to be efficient at work or is being inefficient beneficial in some scenarios? Sure. I think I'll address that very last phrase of yours there. Yeah, there are at least a couple of scenarios, maybe three scenarios where. I have found that there are advantages to intentionally being inefficient. Uh, one such scenario is around organizational dynamics, if you will. Um, a brief story from probably about five, seven years ago, I was uh, Consulting, I was advising the CEO of a company and I would go in once a week, etc. I was uh, engaged in a variety of different functions in the business. Um, the company had hired a bunch of new interns and uh, they also had the company also, while the company's main role was not branding or marketing, they had an excellent branding team, which not only did the corporate communications, but they also did the uh, analytics, the the sales figures in very beautiful graphs, PowerPoint presentations, and they took pride in the fact that they, they did a great job. And then this one young, young intern comes in and uh, start helping that team. A month later, this intern incidentally happened to be from my alma mater. So a month later, the head of HR asks me to sit in on a discussion they are going to have with the intern. Turns out that the intern turned the entire marketing department upside down by point and using a feature called design ideas to just take a keyword of whatever was being presented or what would be presented by the management to outside etc and bringing in visuals images which were very appropriate very high st you know international standard and suddenly, this 15 people in the marketing communications department were apparently starting to look for new jobs because they felt they were being made to look like fools. Because where the marketing team, the Marcom team, would take four to five days to decide on a set of images and colors for a pre corporate presentation, this gentleman would turn it around in 15 minutes and everybody would like what he'd done. So HR sits him down. I'm just there as a silent observer and they tell him, you know, you need to tone this down a little. Otherwise, your internship is over. And uh, I was surprised. The intern was surprised. HR explained that it's not just about how incredible you are. It's also about people who have built up a uh, an equity within the business of doing something. And when you suddenly show up, do something in a much more efficient way, now everybody feels that their employment for the last five years or six years in this company is under question. So in order to keep the organizational health, you need to be inefficient. Now, fortunately, he uh, he took the hint and uh, never did get thrown out of the company. He left by himself a little later. 
But that's one situation. Organizational dynamics will often dictate that even if you know a supremely efficient way of doing something, if that supremely efficient way is an order of magnitude or more better than what's already being done, you might want to tone it down a little. The other is there are certain roles, business areas where revenue determines that inefficiency would be of advantage. Specifically, um, in situations where the organization earns its revenue by uh, body shopping, by selling the hours or the headcount of the organization to clients, where clients will pay for the time, sure, but clients are never, or almost never, happy to pay for uh, standard time off which employees have, or sick leave which an employee has, or time taken for overhead such as filling time sheets or reimbursement forms and so on. So somebody has to fill in that time. And organizations typically are there to make money. So they don't want to pay for the time. The client doesn't want to pay for the time. So the organization tells the employee that you're spending five hours in the day on client work. The other, let's say another hour or two in your learning, overhead work, etc. And maybe another hour just wasting time. Fair enough. Bill the client for the entire eight hours. Don't finish things too fast because then other people in your team who are billing eight hours for a given piece of work, if you start billing five hours to the client, there will be questions. We will lose revenue. So make sure your overhead is built into the inefficiency that you intentionally play into your role. The third, which I think is applies not just in the corporate world, but to many of us, many of us panelists and many of the guests as well, uh, which is that in our roles, whether it is in a nine to five job or as an entrepreneur or as an individual, as a freelancer, um, we can either be chasing extreme efficiency, doing things extremely well, extremely quickly, pushing them over the fence to the client or to ourselves if we're doing something for ourselves. Or we can slow down, pace ourselves a little and use some intentional inefficiency as breathing room to think through what we're doing, to be creative, to take a concrete example. Um, in one of my earlier roles back in the 2000s, I was responsible for liaisoning with the legal uh, with the legal partners of the company. And uh, while I could have just, the most efficient way would have been to take any legal document that needed to be reviewed and send it over to the uh, law firm, take what comes back and send it back to whoever asked for it. I made it a point to be a little inefficient. I would literally read through the document line by line. Yes, spell check was there, grammar check was there. These aren't new. But I would actually really read through the document line by line. And time and again, I would either find something which was a lapse or something which could be done better simply because I wasn't working from the most efficient template. I was manually doing it. Um, yeah, the CEO wasn't necessarily very pleased with me because uh, I was spending time doing what they were anyway paying the law, law firm to do. But... Uh, which goes back to organizational dynamics. But that intentional inefficiency allowed me to be creative, to add value, which nobody else in the entire cycle would add. And uh, yeah, I did sometimes show the law firm to be a bunch of uh, buffoons, no names named. So there we are, at least three scenarios where intentional inefficiency is a good thing. Uh, Zeus, you're on mute. Yeah, so we did get a few responses and a couple of them do agree with you that some people think that their jobs might go away if they are efficient or if they if the overall majority is inefficient, then sometimes the situation could get worse for that particular individual. Another good interesting point was that some people are comfortable with what they feel is inefficient, and they don't want to explore a new way. Uh, Sharad San, have you experienced anything like that? Yeah, I, I would like to share some of my experiences. So first of all, let me tell you know uh, what are the impact or you know uh, the drawbacks of being efficient, right? Yeah. Uh, until unless somebody recognizes your efficiency, right, uh, in whatever work that you do. Uh, it will always have an adverse uh, effect or adverse impact on yourself first, right? Uh, because it may be uh, misunderstood that you know you may do certain tasks uh, before you know your delivery times, 
and you may be busy doing something else or you know you may be browsing the internet but the person who sees or you know who supervises you he may think that you don't have any job that is the first misconception that people have right uh, because when they are being efficient and they can get things done faster but you you are spending that extra time uh, for yourself or for learning uh, something else but it may not be seen in the right way that is one example which uh, i have personally you know underwent uh another thing is you know uh, your peers uh, within your organization or you know in in your industry uh, they may see it as you know an attitude or a bad influence for other people and in the right supposed to do an activity uh, which on an average you know, it may take around you know 4 hours and if you're turning it down in you know 15 minutes or half an hour then the others may think that you know uh, you're doing something you know which is not supposed to be done and you have to take that time so that you know you can maintain that you know i i you know it can be uh, either political or whatever may be the reason but these are all the effects of being efficient right so that is one thing and uh, if you are always being efficient right uh, wherever you need time right because uh, when you're delivering it continuously people think that okay this is a person who can you know deliver things very fast but whenever you actually need uh, some more time to get one task done and if you're genuinely asking for more time people may come back and say hey, you are you are a more efficient person why do you want so much time right so when it is actually needed probably you may not get it so these are some of the observations that i have seen in my experience Uh, and yeah i think uh, uh, i think it's also the lack of understanding uh, from the other side uh, to recognize your uh, efficiency so that is what i would like to make my observations at this point great i think all of you all are revolving around the fact that the time taken is the main thing which is defining the efficiency here where if you really look at efficiency then there is a lot more to it where there is an avoiding of the wastage of materials that are input overall the effort taken by each individual and the money overall so if for example where uh, anindo brought up that one person could possibly do the work of someone else it's not really where the company can choose that okay let's have this one person and not have the other person and com- combine the work to give it to one person uh but if an organization as a whole can aim towards efficiency how would that work uh doc i think you would have something to say on that since you've tried a efficiency adoption drive with a couple of companies yeah hundreds of companies but generally the problem remains that first of all for efficiency to be in, imbibed internally at an individual level itself is a mindset change and an effort and then amplifying that effort at organizational level is not a technically difficult task but it takes a lot of support and especially uh in active involvement from top management and unless that happens on a large scale nothing is going to work i am sure many of you are attending the session have uh, not just office we are just, we are taking office as an example of any feature rich product which has potential value to deliver the reason we are taking office as an example is because it's commonly used commonly understood and commonly misused and underused so whichever way you look at it it's a good use case to take but that's by no means a product specific problem any technology will have that situation so when it comes to adoption i'm sure many of the people who are on the call also can contribute they have extensive experience but generally there is a distinction between training and adoption and many people actually are doing just training or ear learning or how to go here how to click there use this feature that's not going to lead to effective utilization authoritative guidance about in a given business situation which feature or tool to use in the correct way that is what i would say is effective utilization and very few people have reached there even if they have on a long term basis very very few companies yeah zias yes, just to add a few points uh, on what doc said yeah uh, i think he rightly put it across right uh, adoption is not only about training right 
uh, definitely it could start from training. Uh, that is where you start bringing in awareness. Uh, but when we're talking about adoption, it is uh, definitely ending at how beneficial you are becoming at the end of that, right? After adopting to that technology, or it could be a feature. So there are multiple facets to adoption, right? So it may start with uh, uh, training, but it should end with a before and after comparison of you know your processes, how efficiently you are able to complete the same task with the same you know set of tools and not investing on new new technology, right? That is what is adoption because you already have a technology, right? Uh, adoption doesn't talk about you know introducing new technologies for every uh, you know every uh, activity that you do, right? So better use of your platform is what is adoption and yeah training is just one part of it so that even i would like to you know uh, put my thoughts into it yeah yeah while we are there uh, any of the attendees do you want to pitch in i see a lot of senior people from it and other industries as well any thoughts just unmute and talk or you can put it on chat as well whichever is Absolutely. most comfortable All right, go on, Jay. Yes. Yeah. Uh, please don't feel shy. Don't feel any kind of <laughs> obstacle to coming in. If you have anything, you can even put it on chat. You don't have to unmute and speak. Um, so we have discussed an overall company scenario of efficiency. We have talked about individual wanting or not wanting to be efficient. But that third example, which Anindo had given initially about the gig workers or the freelancers who utilize a sense of efficiency, but have to maintain that median or the middle point where it's not too far from what the average people are using. He mentioned time, but it could be effort as well. Could you give us more on uh, that aspect of it? Anindo. Sure. OK, um, so like I said, I have, one of the things I've been doing for the last 10 years is freelancing gig work. <clears throat> Most recently on sites like freelancer.com or upwork.com uh, or uh, I've also explored fiverr.com. And what I found is that let's say a given type of work so to take an arbitrary example. Re resizing of a Photograph, not just one photograph. Let's say that a particular client has 1000 photographs that they need to be resized to a certain size. And believe it or not, that's a fairly common uh, freelance assignment for people who are just beginning to get into freelancing in, in the creative, in the graphic space. It's an easy entry, it doesn't pay much, but typically it is estimated that you would be resizing not more than about 15 to 20 images per hour, right? The client has specified what the final size has to be. You have to be, you'd be doing 15 to 20 images per hour. Now I go in there, I'm like, all right, I have Photoshop. I can create a batch and I can convert these 1000 images in probably 10 minutes. So I go right ahead and I pitch to the client that I'll bill you for 10 minutes for this. And that, or let's say I'll bill you for an hour for this and I'm being very kind to myself. Time and again, the client will turn around and say there is something fishy going on because all these years I have been paying for maybe 30 hours of work to resize these images or 15 hours of work to resize these images. I'm not actually calculating, so you can work out the numbers yourself. And here's somebody who's going to bill me an hour. So either they're going to do a shoddy job or they are scamming me in some way. So in any case, in the freelancing world, in the gig economy, trust doesn't happen easily. So you automatically get yourself eliminated from even being considered for the job, despite the fact that logically you would say, hey, you know what, instead of spending, let's say, $20 an hour multiplied by 20 hours, I would be spending $60 an hour for one hour. So this should be a good deal. But no, people are comfortable with that $20 an hour for 20 hours. So you lose your opportunities. The other thing is, uh, so there are people who are more efficient. There are people who are less efficient. But they fall into these groups, if you will, clubs, groups, segments that if I'm going in to do something like getting images resized or OK, for people in this group, getting a document review done. 
let's say a training document or a manual to be reviewed. Grammar check, uh, style, quality of writing, verbosity, everything needs to be checked. It's a very common gig work assignment. Now, if I'm going looking for really good people, I would be looking for people who are charging $100 an hour for this kind of work. Within the $100 an hour people that I am routinely dealing with, I will find that they probably review about 15 pages per hour. So I have a rough sense between 10 and 20 pages per hour. And then I find somebody who is in the $10, $10 an hour segment. Firstly, I, if I'm already dealing with $100 an hour people, I will not be giving my business to the $10 an hour person. But even if I looked at their work, I'd be like, oh, this person is charging $10 an hour, but he's going to do only one page per hour. Is it really worth it? The vast majority of clients won't even bother to calculate. So clients look at a particular segment. So as long as within your segment, you're in the right efficiency scale, which means you could be twice as efficient as somebody else. But if you seem to be 10 times as efficient, you're going to lose business. So you have to tone it down. You have to take it slow. The gig economy, unlike employment, does not have even the little assurances of job security that employment does. Freelancers, a client could give a freelancer a work today and give almost identical work to someone entirely different for a higher price the next time, despite the fact that they're very happy with the quality of your work because they have no need for loyalty. So given that, you can't afford to be out of the band. So you have to pick your band. I'm I'm very good. I'm supremely efficient. I'm going to bill $180 an hour. Even if I get only five assignments a month and the other guy gets 50 assignments a month, he's getting 50 assignments at $10 an hour. I don't want to compete with them. Once you're in your segment, you have to be as efficient as that segment is. And I think this is a make or break. And probably for people in the corporate world, this sounds like a foreign language. But those who are consulting or freelancing, I think there will be some uh, bells ringing that, yeah, this makes sense. So again, what you're iterating is that if you are an outlier, you could be looked at as not trustworthy for in some scenarios, while as long as you have at least a few people in the similar segment, like you said, groups, then there is more chance of you getting more work or your work being credible. Yes. Yes. OK, so with if that I, in if, mind, yeah, if I may, add, since you use the word credible and I think I, I should have used that word myself. So well put, I think your credibility has zero stickiness in the freelancing world. I know I won't say zero. I, I mean, a lot of my freelance clients in the uh, 3D rendering CAD space come back to me with more assignments. But if I'd been seriously out of band, they wouldn't. Right. If I ask them to think that, you know, there must be a reason you should deal with me, they'd be like, I'd rather not deal with you than think. So credibility has no stickiness. I think that's an important point, which, you know, between what you said and what I said, it needs to come across. Okay. Uh, now, with that in mind, uh, is there, this is for anyone in the panel, is there a way in the corporate scenario where if you personally don't know of the most efficient way to do something, you can identify if someone is being inefficient or not. So you're saying if I as a manager don't even know a better way of doing something, can I identify that a subordinate is being is inefficient? efficient or inefficient? Yes. <laughs> oh, actually, uh, Sharad -san. Sharad -san. Yeah, uh, so it, it depends, right? Uh, uh, that's why I brought up this point in my initial comments. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, if the efficiency or uh, the way that you are being efficient, if it's recognizable, and uh, uh, it also has, uh, you know, we as individuals are, are also responsible uh, to make others understand uh, that, you know, being efficient is good, right? Uh, but at the same time, um, uh, as Anindo brought up, right? Uh, sometimes uh, in some places uh, being inefficient is required, right? I think all the examples that he gave is is uh, definitely you know valid. Uh, let me put across my uh, some of my experiences. Um, definitely, you know, uh, uh, in in our world, in the corporate world, we definitely prepare a lot of presentations or a lot of approvals, right, for project approvals or you know we're building a solution for a customer. So that is where uh, you know we have certain timelines to deliver these. Uh, solutions. Uh, let me take an example where you know uh, I prepared a solution. Uh, uh, 
uh, I went for an approval uh, to the management, and uh, you know, I get I got a lot of feedback. You know, uh, whether is whether uh, the feedback is relevant or irrelevant for that particular customer is you know is is secondary. Uh, the reason uh, I got a lot of feedback was, you know, there was too much of time uh, where the commitment to the customer was. For example, you know, uh, the commitment to the customer was that we are going to come back with a solution next week. But I went ahead so that, you know, I can build that consensus uh, with everybody. And, you know, we can, uh, in, in fact, you know, we can, uh, uh, you know, build on this solution in a very robust way. Uh, but the way I got the feedback was, you know, very, very trivial. And, you uh, uh, I ended up, you know, getting demotivated, right? So the, we have to find a balance uh, how we were able to achieve that. Uh, and then I started learning that, uh, you know, uh, why I was able to turn around uh, solutions faster. And that is when I started telling my supervisors or, you know, uh, uh, the management uh, how I did that so, you know, so quickly. You know, they would also appreciate me and I would also not get demotivated, right? Uh, because once they gave that feedback, we'll have to again rework on the same thing. And that is where, you know, we will have to put a lot of thought process. So uh, I also would like to give one scenario, right, in this uh, case, where I would have, uh, it, I would have been perceived better if I was being intentionally, you know, inefficient. And if I could have taken that extra time uh, to think about what may be the feedback that I may get. And you know, uh, put that extra hours and then go for an approval. Probably that could have been a better scenario uh, in 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 this context. Yeah. Thank you, Sharad sir. Uh, but okay, so you were saying intentionally trying to be inefficient so that it is acceptable a little more. Dave, do you have something to say? Yes, I just wanted to comment on Shara's point. I, I, I've experienced exactly the same scenario you've just explained, where. Okay, I'm my background is ex-military, and in the military you learn to improvise. Um, I'm actually not a I'm not a graduate, but I'm actually very successful in my in my role. Uh, <clears throat> and the question I have is efficiency versus quality. I'm absolutely focused on quality and very good documentation, very attention to detail to me is more important than the efficiency. My colleagues can do tasks quicker, but they don't document what they've done and they can't remember what they've done later and it, it, it's not recorded. Uh, so for me, capturing what I do so that it's repeatable is very important. My, my boss objects to this on occasions, but I do it anyway because I think, okay, I'm going to ignore what he says. Uh, getting the quality and documenting what I do is more important than the time, even if it costs me my personal time. Absolutely. That's a good point. Absolutely. Thank you, Dave. Uh, Doc, you were about to say something. No, no, we should move on to the next question or next uh, subject topic. Okay. <laughs> so since Dave has brought up the difference between quality and efficiency, let's put one more word in there and see what would be, how would you distinct between productivity and efficiency? Doc? Yeah, I think uh, Sharad San is more qualified than that. <laughs> Very, very famous global auto manufacturing company for a long time. So, Sharad San, over to you. Thanks, Doc. Uh, yeah, I, I'm happy that you know Dave brought up that point. Uh, uh, in fact, you know, I would like to assure him that uh, if you're being efficient, uh, that means it is adding quality to your work. Uh, whereas, you know, there's another point which you know Zeus brought up. Uh, I think we are doing comparison between productivity and efficiency, right? Uh, productivity, according to me, is uh, where you have to get the outputs much faster, right? Irrespective of what process you do, you know, uh, what tools you use, what resources you use. Uh, but whereas in efficiency, uh, you're using the best of the resources. You're refining your processes or the steps that are involved in the processes, right? So uh, the resistance of efficiency is much lesser, right? Because people are familiar with the tools, it is just uh, you know they don't know how 
correctly they have to do it but when we're talking about productivity uh, people always uh, you know get, get feared about you know losing their jobs because uh, if it's it's a you know, normal uh, misconception within the corporate world that you know if you're being productive then definitely you know there are some heads that's going to roll out right so that's not the case right and that should not be the case so uh, it has to be positioned in such a way that you know uh, efficiency uh, is what we are trying to target and and not the productivity right because productivity uh, may lead to uh, you know bad quality as well because you know end of the day you're just concentrating on the output and not the quality of the output right so yeah being efficient uh, i would i would say that you know efficiency is um, is within the umbrella of productivity because if you're doing you know things more efficiently that means definitely you're saving some time so in turn it would lead up to you know good productivity itself so yeah that, that's what i wanted to say great thank you sharad sir anindo doc anything to add no, or anyone I'm else in the I, i'm just beginning to get uh, you know kind of sunrise happening dawn is happening in that <laughs> i think a lo lot of what we've been talking about i i begin to see that yeah productivity is just how quickly we churn out widgets yeah. whether those are good widgets bad widgets useless widgets is not really even being accounted for yeah so yeah but let's face it in a lot especially in, in a service uh, nation in a service economy like ours i think it's the number of widgets that are all being counted that are being counted most of the time yeah <laughs> yeah output volumes So, Doc, you had this uh, concept on uh, how to identify inefficiency in office products. Does yeah. that apply to everywhere else as well? Uh, you are talking about the way and of detecting your own inefficiency. Oh, your own means. inefficiencies, yes. Yeah, but that will require some explanation. Everyone in the audience may not know that. So, what the concept? I will tell you. I will not show a demo. The idea is like someone was mentioning i forgot who that if i'm doing something everyone around me is also doing it by and large the same way whether it is me my boss my subordinate my competitor my industry competitor another country who is competing doesn't matter everyone is doing it the same way how do i know what we are doing is inefficient or not it's a wishful thinking hopefully so everyone has discovered the best way of doing things by trial and error which is statistically impossible so forget about covid pandemic if inefficiency is the real pandemic because it is even checked at least we check for covid here inefficiency is so rampant because nobody checked because nobody thought even today if you ask someone do you think you are inefficient who will say yes why would they even say yes not just to protect their ego at heart i feel what i'm doing must be good maybe there is a little bit of effort by 10% here and there but thousands of percent improvement impossible that is the problem because as a vendor who creates software and i'm not talking microsoft any software or any widget developer for to be make it generic there is a need and there is a solution so in software world the use case becomes a button or a right click menu or a drop down a user interface element so now if people are using only 150 features and microsoft has given 12000 features do you think microsoft is not a profit making company they were just wasting their time creating 11000 whatever number of features because they have nothing else to do no each feature came from a use case that use case without even knowing that people are saying no no i don't need that when i am saying i don't need that i don't even know what i am saying no to so that is i would say it is not inefficiency it is yeah, what would i say it's called active ignorance means i am seeing those buttons every day i know i know only few of them i know that i don't know most of them not knowing is called ignorance fine but knowing that i don't know and being happy with it is called active ignorance means i am okay with it because i am incompetent my boss is incompetent entire industry is incompetent let's live with that what is the problem what we don't realize at individual level at least if you become slightly more competent you don't have to show that you are competent we got so many reasons for why 
showing off that you are more competent may land you into trouble. Absolutely, no doubts about that. You how to express your inefficiency has nothing to do with whether you want to become efficient. You become efficient, then knowingly become inefficient. Absolutely fine on demand, but at the moment you have a choice and that choice is entirely yours and it's not adversely affecting you. You tell me if you know two ways or five ways rather one of them is supremely better than the other four. Why would any sensible person do something inefficient unless there is some external pressure? So at individual level. It makes sense. It's a fun exercise. Life becomes more the same mundane activity becomes more enjoyable if you are exploring. There's nothing to lose everything to gain how to express you decide that that's my take on it. And then if you can influence few people, maybe it can grow into organizational level. If this is understood by senior people that can definitely grow much faster and on a larger scale. But even there, just because you are senior now doesn't make you efficient. Your inefficiency came from school days. Now you are CEO. What difference? You still can't copy paste properly. Right? You of course have a business experience, domain expertise, but when it comes to office, it's nobody taking it seriously. So everyone is inefficient. Thank you. Doug. <clears throat> but uh, now with that in mind, you are saying we need to know the efficient ways before we can intentionally be inefficient to make it more comfortable yeah. for everyone around us. Yeah, even before that, you need to know what you are doing is efficient or not. How will you find that out? If everyone around you is inefficient, who will detect your inefficiency? So there are three simple ways of doing that. You observe what you are doing. If it's repetitive and not adding value, that means most probably it is inefficient because that reputation the vendor must have noticed as a potential enhancement area or a use case for their product. Second thing is whenever you feel you are helping the product rather than the product helping me, like in this case you are dragging, dragging, dragging. Why are you dragging? Can't Excel know how many rows are there? No, it doesn't because of gaps. OK, we bridge that and then job done. So when you are helping the software instead of the software helping, like to give an example which is outside office. If I am using Photoshop and I'm doing resize 100 times manually, shouldn't I think Photoshop hasn't Photoshop thought about photographers and the fact that photographers need batch processing? So I should guarantee in my mind that that feature has to be there. It's just a question of finding which menu. Then I can predict features because I know it's a mature product. It's a feature rich product. Every feature is for person like me. I must be confident that it is there and then find it. So now I am going proactively and finding features. I'm not groping in the dark. And the third thing is hands or brain. You are dragging, dragging, dragging. Hand was doing something. You will get arthritis. Brain was sleeping. You will not grow in your career. So any imbalance between hands and brain is inefficient. That's how at an individual level you detect inefficiency. I'm sure Anindo works on completely different set of products which are 3D modeling, graphic design. He may have your own generic ways of detecting inefficiency there. What I said is in the context of office. No, no, I think I think exactly those things apply in the case of pretty much every other tool I use, whether it is CAD software or whether it is rendering software like eShot or whether it is uh, Photoshop, like you said, or for that matter, yeah, I do some work on MS Office also. So I think the same. <laughs> I mean, it, it may not be my primary line of work, <laughs> but it's definitely um, one hour a day at the very least. I'm in office, so <laughs> let's not. So yeah, I think the, the generic definitely applies in practically every tool. And in fact, why are we even saying tool? I think Sharad San will probably agree with me. In any process, whether that is a manufacturing process or a computer-based process, whether it is one of our, you know, we Indians love to escalate ourselves to the point where we don't need to leave the desk, where our job is defined by being able to work from a desk as opposed to going to the shop floor. But even in the shop floor, I think the same three rules apply you know even in the fabrication space and which is something i have a little bit of prior experience in they're also the same thing you know if it's hand versus brain or if anything you're doing is benumbing your brain you're probably not being very efficient there is probably a robotic way of getting it done 
So I think it applies across far beyond MS Office. Great. Yeah. Yeah, just just to add few points, I think uh, yeah, that's that's a valid point. But I want to bring in a different perspective here. Uh, if you talk about IT industry now, uh, we all are moving towards the agile way of working, right? Uh, we cannot afford to be in, inefficient uh, now, right? At least as individuals, for ourselves, we should not be inefficient. Now, how you want to portray it, like Doc said, you know, how you want to portray it to your manager, to your customer, that is left to us, right? Uh, because there are so many other factors that are involved in you know in defining those but we as individuals when uh, we are responsible for certain tasks at least there we have to be efficient and we we don't have a choice whether we have to be or we, have, we do not have to be right uh, even when, when it comes to my personal tasks i don't have a choice even even if there are external factors you know affecting me i cannot be influenced by those uh, you know factors i should finish my work Right? I should still use the effective way of finishing my work. But if you want to uh, deliver it to your manager, to the customer, that is where you know you can bring in all the factors. But for doing that activity, I should not be inefficient. I should always be efficient. Right? So that's that's one slight thing which you know I wanted to add because people should not get you know uh, confused that you know okay even when I'm doing a task which I know which can happen in ten minutes. Anyways, I've you know I've committed for one hour, so I'll take the entire one hour. That should not be the case. You still go ahead and finish it within that uh, ten minutes. Make use of that remaining forty-five or fifty minutes for other better work, or you know that you can utilize that time for yourself, especially in the you know in the era of pandemic, right? Where uh, your time is not your time anymore. <laughs> yeah, Nindo. I think there is one specific niche situation where Sharad San, I disagree with you, which is so I took the example of certain freelance, uh, you know, gig economy or freelancer sites. So just take one of those examples, one which I'm most familiar with. There's a there's a site called Upwork and on Upwork, you can either pick up fixed cost projects where somebody's going to pay you X for doing this or you can pick up early projects. I consciously do not pick up early projects because Upwork's system for early projects involves running one of their software on your computer, which then A, takes a snapshot on your webcam every so many minutes, B, takes a snapshot of your desktop screen every so many minutes, and C, takes a snapshot of what applications are running on your computer every so many minutes, which means if I were to very efficiently finish off something in 15 minutes and it something which typically is billed for two hours, and then I sent in a bill for two hours, Upwork itself will shoot down that billing and bill the client for one hour, pass me that money and say, that's it, you're trying to defraud the system. So in that case, I really have to find an actual, innovatively inefficient way of doing the job. Okay, so right. there's that one niche case, and that is going to increase now as people move more and more towards the work from home combined. Yeah. And let's face it, there are corporates who are doing something like this. There are corporates who have webcams running on their work from home employees, computers, watching them to yeah. track. And Amazon is not the only such company. There are many other systems which are watching them to track whether they even leave their desk and go. Right. It's probably far worse than it was in the workplace. In the workplace, yeah. you could go take a coffee break with five other people and gossip for 20 minutes and nobody would say a thing. Today, that shows up in your timesheet. So I think there are there are going to be increasingly situations where you have to be creatively inefficient, intentionally and innovatively inefficient. Yes. Not everywhere. Okay. Not everywhere. Nothing applies to everything. But you know, there is that specific niche which I think was a foreign concept five years ago. Agreed. Now within the last four minutes of the event, let's take one last quick question. Like you said, there are you need to be creatively intentional inefficiency to utilize that time but how do you ensure that you don't look inept if you do that uh yes i think someone has raised their hand ujita yes uh you can hear me yes, yes. yes. Ujita, please come. Yeah, the thing is, uh, I, I openly share this idea with you guys to have a, a better understanding on uh, my uh, insights. So let's say uh, that, that you have talked that the, most of the products and the companies are well-established one. Uh, 
uh, for the examples you take up work and we went those kind of things. so my question is let's say in within a company we are we are grooming uh, some kind of kind of a department so at that level yeah there, there may be uh, there may be so many kind of uh, standard ways to come up with uh, technological level but uh, in in for that moment we are we are grooming we are coming up so we have to have uh, to follow very basic things in uh, that uh, that model then we will uh, lose some kind of uh, some kind of main uh, main best practices in the uh, organization level so yes. so how to tackle this gap because you all gave the solutions with uh, upwork fever and well established one let's say we are coming from the down from zero to uh, growing now so at that level there may be uh, some kind of gap with the technology and what we are using here now because we uh, we have to come to some stage and at that stage we can have all of the tools and that come the those things so how to how to uh, fulfill the that gap uh, with that uh, efficiency actually doctor you can um, yeah Good. so um i know what he is saying and let me rephrase what he is saying he is saying most of the discussion we have had is either in two extremes either an individual freelancer or a very large enterprise what about small and medium businesses who may not have access to large scale consulting budgets or expertise in every level of technology and maybe not the training budget how do we go about doing it now actually at least as far as office is concerned that kind of content is there everywhere free content millions of videos millions of uh, tips and tricks books all that but if you ask me authoritative content as to in a use case based manner in this case what is the best without troubling you too much it's not a quick fix because typically what people do if there's a problem they google it whatever comes on the first page first half first two many people don't even understand the first is an ad but never mind that but nobody has the patience to scroll down because of that the most commonly search method comes up not necessarily the most optimal method now i don't think there is a large scale solution for it but fortuously uh, fortuously fortuously he asked it right now and uh, i was always wanting to do something in this context because there are hundreds and thousands of resources for learning office tools and other tools as well but real authoritative guidance which is not too big to digest it should be short and sweet but not spoon feeding inducing you to learn so i actually i've just signed an agreement with pact publishing to write a book and the name of the book itself is fortunately you are inefficient and we have aran and pratik from pact actually attending the session so good you ask that question i can't tell you the timeline yet but it will come soon in any case i have been doing that on my blog and youtube channel in any way it's not a tips and tricks blog it forces you to think so the only way to continue this journey either at individual or organizational level is to proactively learn as a part of the game it's a mindset change not how many features i know versus how many features you know there is no competition going on it's a mindset Okay, doctor. Thanks. If I may add, uh, based on my experience, what I have seen is, uh, uh, I think the process maturity is the major area that we need to address in you know uh, small and medium scale uh, organizations. Yeah. Um, because you know uh, the processes are not uh, so robust, or you know it may be people dependent. So that is where uh, that would be the first step, uh, even before we could talk about efficiency. Sure. Uh, that's that's my observation, which you know I want to put it. yeah and just to add to what is said whether it is a small organization or a large organization when it comes to using office tools there is no process defined anyway it's as bad so don't feel bad that you are from a smaller country or a larger country developed or developing economy small business medium business everyone is under developed when it comes to office even microsoft doesn't have standard operating procedure for their staff for how to use office when they create it I I would say the same applies to any non-trivial suite of tools. Yeah. Any feature-rich product, you mean? Yeah. Any feature-rich product or tool or tool set. In fact, it is like not how, that it's a deficiency. People have not even noticed that there is a need because everyone figures it out. Job is getting done, and nobody is checking how the job is done. 
and then in the process everyone is inefficient and they were happily inefficient thereafter like that <laughs> unfortunately now we are out of time yeah, so shall we conclude i guess so unless some people from anyone has any questions has any comments or we have comments. had a very good uh, audience and participation thank you so much everyone for being anyone has any questions or any other observations to add to this discussion yeah just unmute and talk or any comments about whether this session was useful could we have done something better anything any inputs feedback is most welcome shesham has also we shall be sharing a feedback, feedback link as well yes yeah. in chat yeah the session uh, was useful said something. good to hear all the comments thank you Thanks. thank you dave Uh, so hello nitin sir and anindo sir i am akshay manike so yeah. uh, uh, sir nitin sir uh, uh, i was just hoping for uh, for the similar sessions which i have attended and i have gone through your uh, all the tutorials as usual but this uh, session was entirely different and yes. the topics and the subject which we discussed in this session was very very nice and uh, as as uh, Uh, as per the all the previous sessions i got a different <laughs> vision to look uh, at the at the things so thanks a lot for uh, all the panel members nitin sir uh, and gs as well for coordinating one thanks thank, thank you so thank much. you thank you akshay anyone else has anything to say if not can we just have uh conclusions from the panelists so just one uh, new thing i am trying nowadays because we are on a call and we want to have um, good memory of this any of you want to un show your video and we can take a group photo whatever the teams allows if anyone is wanting to do that we can take a group photo and i'll share the screenshot with you Yeah, there is Dev. Hi, Dev. Lot the easy organization start organization are probably starting their journey on the cloud because the, their their initial idea is hey, let me concentrate on my core business. I okay, I guess that's it. Thanks. I'm <laughs> taking the photo, and let's call it a day. Yeah. Great. Just you want to close it formally? Yeah. Thank you, everyone, for joining us in this event. I think what we have concluded with is that as long as the company is not becoming efficient as a whole, it's an individual's choice if you want to be efficient or not. Otherwise, the pandemic is really inefficiency, not COVID. Thank you, everyone. Do share your feedback in the link in the chat, and join us next time. Thank you. Thank you Zeus. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thanks everybody. Thank you. Thank you.